that that is an issue that we have at the moment. Um, like, I, I mean, with all due respect um, to the Australian of the Year, well, when I think about um, movements for gender, gender equality and so on, there's, there is a lack of actual uh, of voices of people from those communities that are being given platforms to speak out when so many of the people, or if not most of the actual action, the groundwork is done by people from these communities who are directly affected, whether that be LGBTQI or um, or women or um, or people from minority racial communities as well. So. Mm. Um, do you think it's a good thing that powerful white men like General uh, David Morrison, as he was, uh, end up as champions of diversity? I think that it's very important that, that they speak and they join the movement and they be a part of it and use their power for that. But I think that in terms of giving them the platforms when there is a possibility of that platform being used by somebody who doesn't have a voice, um, I think that that can be problematic and I think that's something that we need to be very aware of. I, I mean, for example, I was speaking to Stan earlier and one of the reasons that his speech I found was so powerful was that it was an Aboriginal man speaking about those issues and too often do we have others speaking about them and we're more prepared to listen to them. I'll uh, go to Stan and uh, actually the speech that's being referred to um, did talk about what happened to Adam Goods very mm. passionately. Mm. Well, the, the Adam Goods issue for me, and I'm not going to sit here and you know, Adam's been able to fight his own battles and, and very successfully. But the Adam Goods issue for me came down to this. I could not say what lay in the hearts and minds of people who booed Adam Goods. There may have been a whole range of reasons. What I could speak to and what I tried to speak to in the speech and in other things I've written is how we saw it, what we heard as Indigenous people. And as I explained, we heard a howl of humiliation and it echoes across 200 years of dispossession, injustice and suffering. And we live with the impact of that every day in our lives. I have, my parents have. The fact that I've managed to, to build a life for myself and have a measure of success doesn't diminish the fact that my family have been through enormous pain and trauma because of the impact of, of colonisation. The Adam Goods issue, though, really, for me, awakened the nation. And the response that I'd received to various things I've written or said has said that this country is reaching a point where they will engage with this. We won't all agree, but we're not shouting from the margins anymore. We're not, we're not speaking in protest anymore. We're speaking from the heart of the country as the first peoples of this country. And it is being heard and it's being received. And I don't think we've ever been there before in this country. And that, to me, has been a very positive outcome. Well, Stan, not everyone agreed, obviously. I mean, um, you might say the columnist Andrew Bolt was actually shouting from the margins, but he accused Adam Goods of using his soapbox to vilify our past and to preach division. I mean, that was his view. It was a view held by, let's say, a minority of people. What do you say to that? Well, you know, Andrew Bolt um, asks, often performs a useful function. This is a democracy. People have the right to express this opinion. This is not about censoring people's views. If people find issues of invasion and colonisation and settlement and dispossession confronting, then so be it. Let's have that discussion. Often I find Andrew will, will ask questions that, 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 that demand more thought from us. As Indigenous people, we need to engage with Australia as well and we need to find a way to have a dialogue. I don't... I don't, you know, d diminish or uh, negate the right of people like Andrew to, to raise those sorts of questions. Adam Goods was Australian of the Year. He was recognised not just for his work as a footballer, but for his work in recognition. He, he, he used that platform to advance issues of reconciliation, to challenge us. And yes, he paid a big price for it. But this is the democracy that we live in. And I don't think we're well served when people's voices are silenced. Equally, we're not well served when our voices as Indigenous people are silenced either. Catherine Keenan and 